What we'll do now is practice with a slightly more complicated molecule, butane. So I begin by grabbing my pencil tool. I lay down a carbon atom, followed by three successive carbon atoms in the chain. I move my pencil tool off canvas, then grab my selection tool and click in the black area to be able to uh, deselect everything. If I click on the H icon, I now have hydrogens here. And I can rotate and view that molecule by moving around here. It's interesting because by default, it looks like everything is pretty much staggered, which I suppose is good. To make sure that we have this molecule in its lowest possible energy conformation, let's go ahead and go to Modify, Driding Minimize, and enter 100 iterations with the rest of these criteria. We now click OK, and the molecule rearranges. We can expand our molecule again by clicking this black box here. If we grab our rotation tool over here and start staring at it, we should see that each of these bonds looks like it is indeed staggered anti. What is the relative energy level of this molecule in its most stable conformation? Well, let's go up here to Modify, Driving Minimize. We'll knock it back to zero iterations and then click OK. Now we go to Window, New Data Table, and it shows us the relative energy level of this molecule, which is 4.63 kilocalories. I want you to write that down, and then we'll minimize this window and maximize the canvas. I'd now like to take this molecule and mess with it a little bit. What I want to do is get a confirmation that we believe, from what we've been taught in organic chemistry, is less stable. To do that, I want you to rotate the molecule so that you're staring down the C2C3 bond. In other words, I'm going to be staring right down the bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3. So I'm rotating it right here so that I'm looking right down that bond. As you do that with the hydrogens in place, you can see once again that it's staggered anti. That is, the methyl group that's in the rear is up here pointing 180 degrees away from the methyl group that's in the front. Now, of course, we're going to mess with this molecule a little bit. What I'd like to do is see if we can get a staggered gauche conformation. We'll do that by changing this atom right here to a carbon atom. All we do is select it by left clicking on that atom, and then you type the letter C on your keyboard, and it will change it instantly to a carbon atom. Now, we'll rotate this molecule around and change this atom right here to a hydrogen atom by clicking on it and then typing the letter H on our keyboard. If we look down the barrel of this thing, you'll notice that it is now a staggered gauche conformation. That is, the methyl that's in the back is not 180 degrees away from the methyl in front, but they're sort of kind of on top of each other, but not, not as on top of each other as you'd see if it were an eclipsed conformation. What I'd like to do now is make sure that we deselect everything by clicking out here in the black. We now click Modify, Driving Minimize, and make sure we have zero iterations. We now click OK. We can now see the relative energy level of this staggered gauche conformation by clicking Window, New Data Table. As you can see, the relative energy level of the staggered gauche is about 92 kilocalories. I'd like you to write that down now. We'll now minimize this window and maximize the larger window. Now let's see if we can get an eclipsed conformation and its energy level. To do that, we reach over here and grab our selection tool right there. And then we'll click on this hydrogen and drag it down so that it's kind of right on top of the hydrogen behind it. And then we do the same kind of thing. We'll grab this hydrogen here. At this point, I want to make it so that we don't see all of our hydrogens, get them out of the way by clicking this H icon with a line through it. All the hydrogens will now be removed. Let's grab this carbon atom in the front and move it so that it's kind of three-dimensionally right on top of our carbon atom in the back. Now we'll click the H here so that all of our hydrogens are revealed. This is an eclipse conformation. And if you grab the rotation tool and rotate, you can see that it's an eclipse conformation where the two methyl groups are right on top of each other. And it kind of looks a little bit like a poodle. What is the relative energy level of this conformation? What we'll do is we'll go up to Modify, Driving Minimize, and click OK. Now we go to Window, New Data Table. And for some reason, that number is smaller than the number for our staggered gauche. Let's go ahead and minimize this window and maximize our canvas. Question is, do we believe that this conformation is actually at a lower energy level than the staggered gauche? The answer, of course, is no. This is a perfect example illustrating the fact that computer programs are not infallible. So what should we do? What I'd like you to do is take this eclipse conformation and see if we can minimize it. That is, tell the computer that we want it to move the atoms around in such a way that it gets us to a lower, more stable conformation. To do that, we'll make sure that we have everything deselected 
Then we go to modify, writing minimize, and we'll knock it up to 100 iterations and then hit OK. <gasps> now it's all done. Does that look like the most stable confirmation? No, it doesn't. So what's going on? Is the computer lying to us? What these computer programs do is they try to move the atoms around, and in this case it happens so fast that we couldn't visually see it, but they're trying to achieve the lowest energy level. At 100 iterations, however, it can't screen through every possible rotation that these atoms can undergo, and therefore it found within a small range of rotations what the most stable confirmation was. That confirmation is called a local minimum. It's to be distinguished from an absolute minimum, which would be the confirmation at which all of the atoms are the absolutely most stable arrangement. How can we fix this? Well, one thing we could do is we could go back up here to modify writing minimize and up it to 1,000 iterations. So let's give that a try. As we do that, you'll notice that it rotated the atoms a little bit more. And if, as we stare down that, you can see that this is indeed a staggered gauche confirmation. Let's go ahead and go up here to Window, New Data Table, and see what the new data are for the staggered gauche. Yeah, that staggered gauche is 10.31, which is less than our eclipsed confirmation, energy level of 39.9, and is way less than the initial staggered gauche that we got. Is the staggered gauche confirmation, however, the most stable possible confirmation? Of course, that is not true. The staggered anti is. So if we go up here and go to Modify, Driding Minimize, and try it again, we'll notice that it wiggles out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and increase then our number of iterations to 10,000 and then see what happens. That still didn't improve it very much, which means that the software is kind of just getting hung up at a local energy minimum. We definitely want to have our staggered anti-confirmation right now so that we can get the energy level of that again. To get to that, what we'll do is select this hydrogen atom and then type the letter C on our keyboard to change it to carbon. We now want to change this carbon atom up here to hydrogen by clicking on it and typing the letter H. So we rotate back. This is a lot closer to the staggered anti. Let's go ahead and go to modify, writing minimize with 100 iterations and hit OK. That should look a lot closer and a lot better to the staggered anti. If we want to do more iterations, like 10,000, for example, we definitely can. Yeah, that one looks gorgeous. Let's go up here to Window and select New Data Table and then see what the energy level of that is. Yeah, that's 4.75. You'll notice that this staggered anti is not quite as low of an energy level as our initial staggered anti was. Nevertheless, it is much lower in energy than both the staggered gauche and the eclipsed. So what's the take home from this? Well, the take home is that the computer models can be used to assist scientists in being able to predict relative energy levels of molecules. However, you can't just mindlessly believe whatever the computer says. You have to couple the data that the computer obtains with actual conceptual knowledge. In this case, we know that a staggered anti should be more stable than a staggered gauche, which should be more stable than an eclipsed. So if the computer tells us otherwise, once again, it means that it's just getting hung up on a local energy minimum and hasn't yet wiggled the atoms around nicely enough to be able to find the true energy values for those confirmations. Because we know those things, however, we can manipulate the molecule here on the canvas and then reattempt to get data that seem more congruent with conceptual reality. So what is your assignment? Your assignment is the following. First, using this software program, I want you to draw ethane just like we did at the beginning. I then want you to get an energy level that seems consistent with what you know for both the eclipsed and staggered confirmations, and then write those energy levels down. I then would like you to do the same thing for butane as shown here, staring down the C2-C3 bond. When doing this, I want you to get the relative energy levels for the staggered anti, the staggered gauche, and both eclipsed confirmations. The eclipsed confirmation with the two methyls on top of each other and an eclipsed confirmation that doesn't have the two methyls on top of each other. You may have to repeat this multiple times until you get data that seem consistent with theory. Once you get those data, I would like you to write them down and draw each of the confirmations on a piece of paper, either with a software program or by hand, writing down the relative energy levels of each of those confirmations so that your final report should look like this. Hand that report in on the due date marked on our syllabus and you are done. 
Students, that's the end of this video and this lab assignment. In next week's, we'll use the same software program to work on molecular modeling of different conformations of substituted cyclohexanes. Until then, my wonderful students, have an enjoyable rest of your day.